Good morning, welcome back. Wanted to say actually to start this video, thank you so much everyone for all of your support, the comments, the likes, and also subscribing to the channel. It's hugely appreciated. And the channel's just past one and a half thousand subscribers, so I'm over the moon with that. And if you haven't already, if you're watching this video, please do subscribe to the channel because I've got a lot of interesting stuff coming up. Next week, I've actually got a bike that's quite close to my heart from doing some custom, custom 250cc riding in Bali, and that is a 250cc Mutt Mastiff motorbike, which is a great bike for learner riders or riders who just want a smaller bike because they do the exact same model in a 125. So stay tuned for that. I've also got some big Indian chieftains coming, some triumphs. I'll try and get some Ducatis and Moto Guzzi's as well because I know a lot of people really want to see those and compare how, how they are to the triumphs. So today, it's not actually going to be a road focus day today because today I'm going to take the Bonneville off-roading. In the UK, we call it green laning. And to give you an overview, a year ago, I had almost no idea what this meant. I didn't even know it existed. But I'll include a link in the description below of, of where you can find all these. In essence, you can go online, type the website in, and you can see a whole map across the UK of legal off-road tracks. And that means that these are tracks where you can take a motorbike and sometimes even a car, go for free, it doesn't cost anything, the website doesn't cost anything, and you can just legally ride your bike as crazily as you like off-road. And it is incredible fun. And I don't have an off-roading motorbike, as you know. I've only got a Triumph Bonneville, that's my only bike. But, I still like taking it off road, but this one is slightly different because this specific off road area, this green lane, is the most challenging with a lot of rocks that I've been on. So I've never taken it on the Bonneville. I've done it on the Royal Enfield Himalayan and also the Tr Triumph Scrambler 1200XC. But I want to take the Bonneville here for two reasons. One, because I want to, but two, also to show you that the Bonneville actually can cope surprisingly well off-roading, especially when it's been so dry. It's really dusty at the moment. If it's wet mud, no, it'd be awful. But in the dry, Bonneville can get almost anywhere. So I'm gonna take you with me today off-roading. There's a water feature, some steep slopes, nice dusty tracks, and I'll show you how much fun green laning is. And for a free exercise on the weekend, there is nothing better. I've also got what I think may be a solution to sports bike riders, cafe racers, and also adventure bike riders who want to slightly raise the level of their, for example, their phone mount, so you can look at the sat-nav. And that solution is this. That's a quad-lock ball adapter. So what I've got is what a lot of bikers have, a RAM mount, and a RAM mount is basically a way to mount your phone. They often come with this really big mount on top of it, but you can just take that out and you're left with this ball adapter. Loads of different RAM mounts. You can have in the yoke of your bike, handlebar, loads of different areas. Anyway, you can go onto RAM and buy one of those. But instead of having the big phone mount that RAM supply, or that you can buy from RAM, I've got this from Quadlock. So that just attaches in the top there. But actually I've gone one further than that because I'll unscrew this lever and I'll include the quadlock wireless charger and behind that the vibration dampener so my phone will be completely I'll just lower myself there the phone will be completely protected when I'm throwing so that goes into that goes onto the ball adapter and the ball adapter goes onto that so hopefully I may I may be able to demonstrate a good solution for cafe racers and sports bike riders who always struggle with where to mount their phone but that's enough of that. I'm going to take you with me. But actually, before I do, let me take you to one final place. Because you may remember my breakdown a few weeks ago with the, with the Harley Davidson live wire. Well, get ready for this because this is the UK infrastructure. 17 days. 17 days after the BP Polar Chargers broke. Sure you can see that they're still broken that's 17 days 
17 days the charges have been broken. But anyway, here we go. I'm gonna go downstairs, get kitted out. I'll show you how the quad lock looks and then I'm taking with me green laning. Actually, before I head off, I got a package from RST yesterday and I really wanted to show you the gear. Not sponsored or anything, but I just think it's unbelievably good value. So, these are the jeans I got. 150, no, 130 pounds for these jeans and they come with knee armor. 130 pounds, Kevlar jeans, brilliant value. Boots, fully reinforced, real stitching around the edge. 130 pounds, RST as well. And then, Kevlar, riding shirt. And this, for a riding shirt at 150 pounds, I think is absolutely superb value. So this whole thing, the shirt, the jeans, and the boots, you can get for £430, something like that. And I've got riding shirts that cost more than £430. So for the price of for the price of one jacket, you can get this entire outfit. So I just really wanted to do a shout out because RST's new range of kind of modern classic gear, I hugely recommend it. But it's a bit too cold for this jacket today. So before I show you what I'll be wearing today, I do a lot of unboxing on Instagram, just showing the new gear that I've got. So if you'd like to see that on YouTube, some of the new gear that I get, just leave a comment and I'll make sure I read all of them. And if you'd like to see it, I'll act upon it and start including them in YouTube as well. But gear for the day, the next XG, sorry, that's the coffee machine in the background, the next XG100 helmet. I've actually put a visor on it so it looks a bit different from normal, but that just clips on and off. And these, which I forgot to show just now, these are also from RST that I just got yesterday, 40 pounds for these Matlock gloves. So I'll be wearing those. And because it's a bit cold, I'll be wearing the Revit, I forgot the exact model, but I'll write it down, the Revit jacket, which is pretty warm. Green laning time. Well, I'm delighted with this. So this is how the Ram mount and quad lock with the wireless charger, of course, that I love. That's now set up on my handlebars. And let me just show you how the setup works here. So this is very good for sports bike riders, modern classics, clip-ons, or adventure riders who just want somewhere nicer and more convenient to mount their sat-nav, just so it comes up a bit more. Or people, of course, who already have a RAM mount, so now they've got a solution. They don't have to have that big RAM mount that, that's about that size. They can just have this small quad lock. So, RAM mount here, attached to my handlebar. Ram mount this bit here you just turn that and it loosens so you can move this pivot with the ball here and change the angle as you wish I've got which I always have on my quad lock setups vibration dampener and what that means is that and you can trust me on this because I've taken it on some decently hardcore off-roading it will completely protect your camera's internals and then my phone will just attach here, it takes two seconds to just clip it on, and that's how you turn it on and off, so you don't need to unplug it or anything like that. So that's my setup for the day with this new quad lock mountain system. just arrived at the start of the green lane and all you can hear birds because we're in the middle of nowhere beautiful countryside in West Sussex I'll put a description or a name of this exact green lane there so you can try it out but it always blows my mind this is completely legal and what you need to look for when you get to a green lane you'll find it on Google Maps I usually screenshot the picture of the entrance and you'll often see a gate and on the gate in the winter, it will often be closed and there'll be a cross with a car crossed through it, meaning it's not for cars. But that opens up in the spring and summer, so this is now for cars and motorbikes. 
and this is what you want for green laning dry dusty tracks because it means that even with my bike with road tires i'm going to have a lot of fun and i'll still have plenty of grip because i've done some of these green lanes in the winter on the himalayan the scrambler 1200 i've got stuck in the soft wet mud soft wet mud tough dusty tracks unbelievable fun so i'm going to get my helmet on and i'll show you what this one's like Now's the time that things get a bit borderline because we're close to the bottom of the hill and it's really wet mud and actually this is fairly similar to what it was like in the winter. I'll take Monica with me, follow me down here because when I was on the Himalayan and Triumph 1200 XC, Triumph 1200 XC had dual sport tyres and they're not amazing off-road and they're not unbelievable on-road. And I remember being really impressed that both the Himalayan and the 1200XC got up this slippery slope as well as getting through the water feature. But I'm, I'm fairly confident actually that the Bonneville with normal road tyres will be able to get up here. And the reason I'm confident is because the Triumph 1200 Scrambler is a big bike and the, the seat's quite high and it's just a physically big bike and it's difficult to manoeuvre in tight situations but the Bonneville is small with a low seat height meaning it's easy to manhandle so i actually think the bonneville will do okay here himalayan did really well here actually that that's a brilliant challenge for me start at the top of the hill there ride all the way down here through this water feature it's a bit lower than last time and then all the way up to the top of that hill in general though a beautiful spot and that's that's what you get with green laning and off-roading in general. You just get into the middle of nowhere. This is a stunning area that we would never have known existed without it.
Ooh, what a way to spend an afternoon. It is a proper, proper workout. But I was amazed that Bonneville did it. It went all the way down the track, through the water feature, up the soaking wet mud at the bottom and upside up both banks. Almost no issue at all. And weirdly, almost as well as as the Scrambler with 12 uh, with dual sport tires, which is quite interesting. Himalayan had slightly more off-road focused tires, so it was it was more competent off-roading, which I found quite interesting actually, but, but, it's a big but. If you go off-roading or green laning with a normal bike, like my Bonneville, like I was suggesting in the beginning of the video, you get a serious feeling in the back of your mind that you're destroying your road bike. So I don't know if I could actually recommend it, but if you just want to take it easy, find some tracks, and if you're like me, because I've just got caught speeding four days ago and I don't want to go too crazy on the roads if you want a little bit of open space a little bit of a chance to be an idiot green laning is amazing fun but I'm going to see if I can find somewhere for a coffee now it's just started to rain but let me just do a 360 of where we are because I haven't seen anyone anyone for an hour and a half these green lanes often are completely completely deserted absolutely stunning location. Literally two days ago I washed the Bonneville and now it is absolutely filthy. Oh and actually my boots for the day I completely forgot to say. I should have shown these about two hours ago because they were beautiful looking boots but these are Falco boots. I think they're called the Aviators. I'll put the link in the description. But I love these because either side, I've never seen boots like this, either side of the zip or either side of the laces, there's a zip, meaning it's extremely easy to take them on and off. Full padding, everything. I really, really like these boots. Let me just do a little walk around. Actually, it's not too, it's not too bad on the back, but yeah, that will need, that will need a proper clean. on this brownie. Green laning section is about five minutes ride or drive that way and then you've got this really nice little coffee shop here so I highly recommend this. Anyone in the south of England I'll put a note of where it is in the description below. But green laning. Green laning on a normal bike um, yeah I may get some hate for what I did to the bottom of today. That's probably the rockiest off-roading green laning thing that I've ever done on the Bonneville and actually yeah, yeah, I felt like I reduced the life of it by about two years today. If you've got a bike that you like, but it's not off-roading focused or even kind of semi-scrambler focused, I would probably recommend having a second bike that you don't mind messing up a bit. And actually, I've got a tip for you because the Himalayan that I took here, it is a dream on any type of off-roading. It's only four and a half thousand pounds new. And the difference with that and the Bonneville is the Bonneville where I was kind of having to slow down to about 15 or 20 because I really thought I was going to start smashing up the frame and the suspension couldn't cope. Himalayan, I was absolutely full throttle up those hills. And it's a bike that you can just rag to the absolute limit. Incredible fun. So what have I learned? Probably enough hardcore off-roading on the Bonneville, but what a way to spend a day. Well, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I've given you some ideas or possibly completely scared you off the idea of green laning off-roading, but please do give the video a like. I always get this wrong. Give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.